And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Monopoly Gamer. Now, Monopoly is a game which is probably the best known game in the world. It's a game that a lot of people like, a lot of people hate, and a lot of people really, 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 really hate. Um, but you know what? There's been some good versions of Monopoly over the year for sure. Monopoly Tropical Tycoon. And I'm a fan of Super Mario, as is most people. More people know who Super Mario is than know who Mickey Mouse is. That's how popular he is. So this is called Monopoly Gamer. I'm a gamer, so let's give this game a whirl. I know it's different than Monopoly. They certainly advertise that, that it's going to be different. And it is different quite a bit. Here's how. So here's your board of Monopoly Gamer, which looks just like a regular Monopoly board. And you're going to pick a character. So you might pick Yoshi, Super Mario, Princess Peach, or Donkey Kong. Each of these characters comes with a card for that character telling you special abilities that the character has. Uh, the goal of this game is to get the most points. And the currency of the game is coins instead of paper money. And at the end of the game, every five coins is worth 10 points. Also, the different properties in the game are going to be worth points if you have them at the end of the game. And uh, there are bosses that you can kill which are going to be worth points at the end of the game also. So what players are going to be doing on their turn is they are going to be rolling the dice. You're going to roll two dice and then you activate both dice. You can activate the movement first, one, two, three, four. And then you do whatever space you land on. And then you activate the other ability here. So this is a shell which is going to shoot around the board and make the next person, and I guess I get the pick, drop three coins. Many things in this game are going to cause people to drop coins, and when you move or land on coins, you will get, pick up the coins that you move over. So a green shell goes around the board, hits the next person. A red shell is the same thing, but it can hit anybody you want. If you land here, you, if you roll this die, you get three coins from the bank. The squid lets you steal two coins from somebody else. The pal block makes everybody else drop a coin, wherever they might be. And that's pretty much what's on the, on the sides of the thing. Now, each player has a special ability when one of the sides is rolled. So when Yoshi rolls the green shell, he can choose the next player in front or behind him to drop three coins. Princess Peach will make someone drop four coins with the red shell instead of three. Mario, when he rolls the coins, gets four coins from the bank instead of three. And Donkey Kong... When he rolls this, everyone drops two coins instead of one. Now, where do you land? If you land on a property, you can immediately buy that property. Each property has a cost on it. It's listed on the board. And then you take that property. If someone else lands on it, they will pay you rent. If you own both properties of the same color, each color has two properties, you will get double the rent. So if I own one green, people will pay me four every time they land there. If I own two green, they land eight. If you ever have to pay money and you can't afford it, you can flip it over uh, and pay this property back to the bank for the value that you bought it for. If you land on this question mark here, you're going to roll the die, and that's how many coins you get from the bank. That's a pretty cool. Uh, that's a pretty cool roll there. I got. If you land on the star, you will activate your star special ability. So Yoshi here collects every coin on the board with his star ability. Princess Peach collects rent from the bank for each property that she has, so she wanna make sure she has properties. Super Mario rolls a die, adds five to it, that's how many coins he gets. And Donkey Kong will steal three coins from each player when they land on the star space. If you land on a pipe, you shoot to the next pipe, collecting all the coins in between. If you land on these guys here, the choppers or whatever they're called, you just drop two coins. If you land on free parking, nothing happens, just like regular Monopoly. If you land on go to jail, you go to jail. The only way to get out of jail is to roll a six on the die um, or pay five coins to get out. Although after two turns of trying to get out by rolling a six, you will get out for free. The first time someone hits go, by the way, you get two coins every time you pass go, will turn over a boss card. And that person can decide to fight the boss or not. There's a cost. They pay the coin. They roll the die. A three or higher, they beat it. If not, it goes to the next person. 
and it keeps going around the table till everyone passes, in which case the boss runs away, or till someone pays and rolls the number, in which case they get the card, which is worth points, and something else. For example here, take the least expensive unowned property. And every time someone else hits go, there's a new boss monster, until finally we get to Bowser himself, worth 100 points, and the game ends. And then you just count up the points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, uh, there are other characters in the game. There's only four here, but you can buy packs of characters, and you can get Wario, 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 Rosalina, uh, Tanuki Mario, Fire Mario, Boo, Diddy Kong, Toad, Luigi, who is best, because why? He's tall. And these characters all come with their own figure, and so you can pick which character you're going to use, although the game is still only four players. However, there's a party mode where each person has three characters, and you start with one on the board, and at any point on your turn, you can switch out your character and put the other character in so you can start using their special abilities, which gives you a lot more options because I might be using Toad, who collects five coins when he lands in a star. I roll the dice, see that I land on a star, and I'm like, ah, I'd rather, land, I'd rather use Diddy Kong where I can go forward or backwards three spaces. So basically, it just gives you more options. It's the party game mode. Anyway, that's how you play. All right, first of all, boo to the cash grab. And what I mean by that is I like that this game is here. I don't like the fact that you buy these booster packs of characters just to get more characters for the game. Yes, they're, you know, Nintendo has that kind of power and people will do it, just like the amiibo, Amiibos for the, the video games and such. But... At least you can see which one you're buying. When you pick it up, I was like, oh, these better not be random, but they weren't. So I was able to get all eight of the extra characters, but it does add considerably to the price of the game. They are good figures. They look fun and the whole game feels more Mario than it feels Monopoly. All right, Monopoly has all that money and tax and all that. This gets rid of it. This has coins, Bing! you know, the coins that you need to collect and you're shooting shells at each other, moving around the board, and you can buy properties and land on properties and trade properties, but it's a minor thing. Trading is not that big of a deal in this game because you don't have a lot of different, there's only, you know, if I have a red property and you have, and a red and a green and you have a green and a yellow, I need the green, you want the green, what are we gonna offer each other? It's harder to, to make trades in this game, although not impossible. Uh, the game is mostly about rolling the dice and making other people drop coins and then picking them up. There's definitely a take that element to the game with the red shell in here because when the red shell comes, you're like, who am I going to hit and make drop coins? But there's also strategy to that too. I might make Susan lose some coins on the board, but if a Sally is right behind her on the board, she's just going to swoop by and grab those coins. So even though there's a take that element, there is some thoughtfulness to it. And the fact that you can activate each dice first gives some strategy because I might roll the green shell and then move past you so I can shoot the green shell at the next person in front of us. But the game is still lucky. Like, lucky, 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 lucky. Especially with those bosses. Those bosses are worth a lot of points. So you need to roll three or higher, or four or higher, or five or higher, depending on the boss. So the first person to roll five or higher gets the boss, for example. Well, that's just luck. There's nothing you can do to modify those rolls. There's nothing you can do about that. It's just luck who kills the boss. I guess you can make sure you have a lot of money to be prepared to roll. But frankly, it just comes down to luck. It's luck as you land on the properties. And just like Monopoly, there's an auction for properties. But unlike Monopoly, there's never a reason in this game not to buy a property. Because if you ever need money, you just sell your property for the exact amount you bought it for. Which doesn't teach kids about devaluation of houses. But that's besides the point. The game is best with the, the party mode. If you have three characters, because switching them in and out gives you a lot more options. It's fun to write, oh, I'm using Boo now, ha 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 you know, as you bring these people in and out, but it also gives you some more strategy that you're playing. But the game is really devoid of strategy for the most part. You're mostly rolling dice and seeing what happens. Now, you have choices to make, but those choices are mostly take that to other players. So I'm not a huge fan of this game, really, except the Mario theme does elevate it. I, I try not to, right? But it's just cute and fun, and it feels like Mario Party or Mario Kart, and kids really like it. I mean, really like it. So I got to approve it for kids because this is a fun game for kids. It does give them good choices. Now I'm proving it with the party mode because it gives them more choices, okay? Roll your dice. Which die are you going to use first? Are you going to switch your character out? And if you switch your character out, which characters are going to be? That offers enough choices. Doesn't make the game that complicated. It's silly fun. 
Some kids are still going to be annoyed because the strategy is not that deep in the game. But overall, it is an entertaining game, again, for kids. I think they could have done a better job, honestly. I think they could have made this better for adults, too. But for adults, it's going to be a hard pass for me. Monopoly Gamer, it should be called Monopoly Kid Gamer. But either way, it's Mario, man. Dice Tower Judgment, approved, but for kids. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut, Shut the, the door! door. Yeah. Yeah.